Look at that piece of trash. And they call this the greatest event in live entertainment. But I have a question. Where is your former WWE champion? Where is your current WWE world champion? Not anywhere in sight. Not clearly visible. And if that is the case, well then we've got a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, your WrestleMania 33 official poster has been leaked. But I also got news on the pecking order revealed in supposedly official new WrestleMania poster. What made them think putting your three top guys that you put on the Royal Rumble poster, putting them on the WrestleMania poster again, what made them think that that was okay? Undertaker, Goldberg, and Brock Lesnar are, again, in the front of the WrestleMania 33 poster. Speaking of WrestleMania 33, why, why should Roman Reigns beat The Undertaker? Seven reasons. I got them right here. You also have uh, some news some news that you really want to hear. Sami Zayn, among other people, are also pissed off at the issue with Lesnar and Goldberg for the Universal title. And broken Matt Hardy. Well, uh, let's just say he wants to delete the Meek Mahan of the WWE. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part number two because I don't know what else to call this, really. WWE rumors, reports, news, and controversy. Let's get right to it. Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? WWE Movie Maker here, and I have not made videos since Monday. This Monday, I posted the Raw preview, the Fast Lane review. No videos Tuesday, no videos Wednesday, and today is Thursday. And now I realize what a waste those two days were. I had no time. To do anything, anything, and making a video was too difficult. I have time now, and I'm going to make sure that I use this time, ladies and gentlemen, to make as many videos as I possibly can. We're going down to the weekend. The weekend's coming up. We got a lot of more things to talk about. And in the opening of this video, I already had so much news that I have to talk about. That was just a summary, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready for an hour action-packed video on WWE news, rumors, reports, and controversy. I just said that wrong, but whatever. It's actually rumors, reports, news, and controversy. I gotta remember that's my slogan. I gotta keep saying that properly and in order. Get ready for an hour action-packed news and rumors for WWE. All from WWE Movie Maker. Let's get right to it. First of all... We're going to address the big elephant in the room. We obviously know that the WWE WrestleMania poster has been leaked out. People have seen it. People have, you know, commented. They've criticized it. They Some of them like it. A lot of them don't like it. There's a specific reason why. And once I saw this, I was like, okay, so you're going to do this again. That was my official, uh, initial thought. What were they going to do again? Well, they're going to put Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, and Goldberg Again, in the front center of the poster. And they did it. They did it. People are pissed off that you have AJ Styles. I'm looking at the poster right now. Okay? The ultimate thrill ride. Seriously, you... Oh my god, man. Why are you making WrestleMania feel like a cringe show? You're making it sound gay. That's what you're doing. Your, your ultimate thrill ride? Seriously? What is this? My goodness. 
You have a fucking roller coaster in the back too. Ultimate thrill ride. Ultimate. It's not even going to be a ride. You're going to be sitting down. You're not even going to be moving. At this pace. Please man. Ultimate thrill ride. Oh my god. This is not a kid's show. Okay. I understand it's dedicated toward kids. But you have grown men and women. Please. Please. Anyways. WWE has according to the various reports, released a poster of their upcoming WrestleMania pay-per-view event. And the placement of wrestlers on the poster can serve as a direct guide to how the company views each featured wrestler's value to the company. Either that, right, or, you know, this was my first initial thought. They're doing this because they need a buys. They need the buys for the pay-per-view. They need people to sell out arenas, well, sell out the stadium, Citrus Bowl, to make money. When you have the top guys in front, it appeals to the casuals. And when the casuals are appealed, you have more people at WrestleMania. The diehards are going to be there. The diehards are going to fill, you know, probably at least half the stadium, roughly. So this is all appealing to the casuals. They need Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. They need more people to tune into WrestleMania because of the characters and the guys that are involved and the gals. And the biggest draws are Lesnar, Taker, Goldberg. You have Cena there. You have Triple H, Shane McMahon somewhat. And, you know, again, Roman Reigns is actually in front of Cena. So that tells you a lot uh, that they value Roman Reigns way too much, way too much. But then you have Styles. You have fucking Baron Corbin all the way at the back, right? The women, the women are all around the back, which... I guess, obviously, you'd value more of your men than your women. I don't know what that really tells you. You have Randy Orton, who's the contender for the WWE Championship in the back. You have Bray Wyatt. What the f- this guy's just hanging around in the back, near the corner, with Chris Jericho. You know, who gives a fuck, right? I understand you're appealing to the casual, and I understand nobody wants to come off as talking like a mark. But here's the thing about it, man. You can't be sending off the wrong message, Okay. Goldberg and Lesnar, they're for the main event picture. Okay, Undertaker I have no problem with. Okay, But it's the exact same three all the time. What value does Goldberg give you? What value does Goldberg give you? He gives you a lot. He really does. But, but, he's been on every poster since he's been back. Fastlane, he's been number one. Royal Rumble, he's been number one. But he's a part-timer. He doesn't even work that much. He barely wrestles 30 seconds. The company knows Goldberg more. Why? It's because, well, he's a star. He's a mega star. He's been here before, and he's a guy who's over. The guys that come back later and later and later, like The Rock, you know, uh, Stone Cold, they're a fan. They're, people are fans of them and like them more because they're mega stars. They've become mega stars. The guys like Wyatt, Styles, Rollins, even Rollins is in the back. What the hell? And Triple H is bigger than Rollins in the poster. Triple H isn't even that freaking up on the poster. What the hell is this? You know, Kevin Owens in the back, right? Um, You know, Goldberg is not known for wrestling long matches, okay? WrestleMania is the ultimate thrill ride for professional wrestling. You're going to have to put up people in front who can do that. Goldberg is not one of them. Okay, you can't be hiding your future talent. And this is all just because of one poster. We could be saying whatever we want, but maybe WWE's initial thought was, well, we need people to sell out the 75,000 plus seats in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. We need as many people there to watch and make money off of it we're gonna have to put the biggest draws in front for people to see be like oh shit the undertaker is gonna be there i gotta go see that because they may not know a baron corbin over the undertaker that's obvious so that's where the mindset is but what i would at least say is you can't have them so small at the back you can't have that as a matter of fact what i would have done is some of the people that are even on the poster, I wouldn't even have them on the poster because you're taking away the other people's shine. Now, obviously, that's not a favorable thing because all the people that are on the poster right now are 
they are a part of WrestleMania. They're going to be in the WrestleMania matches. So that's why all these people that are on there right now, we know they're going to be wrestling at WrestleMania. We already know, right? So really, you can't take out people. But what I would suggest is at least, you know, uh, show some respect to the talent that is wrestling every day and put some of them up in front. I mean, let's replace, you know, let's replace Roman Reigns for Rollins. Let's replace Cena for even Bray Wyatt, you know. Have them on the sides. Why isn't Jericho, if Jericho's a part time well, now he's not. He's not really a part-timer, right? But he will become one. Why isn't he in front? He's on the back, too. So let's have somebody along with, alongside him and have a future talent in front. You know, if you want to do that, you have to create a little bit of a, a mixture. Not all packed into one. Because then that really tells you that you don't give a shit about anybody else. But maybe you do. It's just that, again, the circumstances are we need people to buy and, you know, sell out WrestleMania. So that was probably the initial thought from them. You got featured up in the front of the part-timer wrestlers. Goldberg, Undertaker, and Brock Lesnar. Goldberg, the current Universal Champion, despite the fact that he can almost certainly not wrestle a match longer than two minutes. And then they say shit about the Undertaker as well, whose hips are made out of paper mache and chicken wire and who could very well be wrestling at his final match, and disgraced MMA fighter Brock Lesnar, followed immediately by golden boy Roman Reigns, who is beloved by management but despised by fans, is a second is in the second row all on his own, and part-timers Cena, Triple H, Shane McMahon behind him. WWE Champion Bray Wyatt is situated right behind your Continental Champion Dean Ambrose, Raw Women's Champion Bailey, and United States Champion Chris Jericho. Um... If you squint really hard, you may be able to notice Kevin Owens and AJ Styles. Uh, <laughs> man, uh, in the way back, alongside the greatest heel in the business today, The Miz, but still in front of SmackDown's women champion, Alexa Bliss. Not featured at all of the tag team champions from either brand or the Cruiserweight champion, uh, Neville, which can obviously tell you that uh, they'll probably be going on the pre-show. Almost, almost certain. Now, does the placement piss you off? You know, are you mad at this? Well, it's worth noting that this poster has been reported as official on 411 Mania, PW Mania, and comicbook.com, amongst other outlets. We can't find it anywhere on WWE's official site or social media accounts. Could it be a photoshopped hoax designed to rile up fans? Maybe. Most likely not, because there will be more posters leading up later on, later on. And we'll realize... Um, this is the official WWE posters, what they're saying. There's going to be a lot of fan-made ones. And it certainly is possible, though conclusions drawn from it are probably accurate regardless. WrestleMania takes place at April 2nd, can be viewed on the WWE Network, or ordered via your cable provider's pay-per-view TV, despite the, because despite the fact that this poster validates every suspicion you hold about WWE's opinion of your favorite wrestlers and your input as a fan, you know damn well you're going to tune in anyways. Oh, anyways, for sure. Um, you, you know, this isn't even the biggest issue with me. I don't even care what the hell happens on a poster. What people say is what people say. Wrestlers say this. Who, who the hell cares what you're on a, you know, what position you're, or what, 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 what area you're on a, on a poster, whether in the back or not. I don't fucking care. I, I really don't. But when I saw this, I was like, okay, so now you're gonna have people say shit about it, which is reasonable because why are you putting these three guys always in front? But WrestleMania, as much as people want to say it's all about the diehards on this show, it is more about the celebrities. It really is. I mean, I don't even know if Big Show and Shaq is still happening. But that, if those two were, you know, they're not even on the uh, on the poster as well. If they, if they were wrestling, they might have been in the, fucking in the first as well, in the first or second row, to be honest. But since they're probably, it seems like they're actually not going to be going. Shaq is speaking with WWE. It seems like they might not be wrestling this year. And really, it would just take up too much time. And you already got like freaking so many matches. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys the updated WrestleMania 33 card, as I said, uh, leading into WrestleMania every week or so. I tell you the updated card and, you know, update you guys on what's happening with WrestleMania. We got the updated card here today as well. But that's, you know, the idea of the poster, you know, the placement of all these guys, the placement of all these gals on the poster. Uh, really pisses a lot of people off, and you know I wouldn't blame them. Um, 
a lot of people are saying that this was because of WrestleMania and how they have to buy uh, and, and, and sell it out is what I it's what I also think as well. But it can really tell, you know, if it if this is WWE's current planning of, you know, where they place people on the, on the rosters and how they value people. Well, then you obviously know that your suspicion is not wrong, that they do care more about part timers and you can't blame them. I mean, they need somebody to sell at WrestleMania. So why not have these three top guys do it anyways? Now, speaking of WrestleMania, seven reasons why Roman Reigns should beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania 33. I did not review Raw, but this past Raw was a great, or I'm going to rephrase that, it was a good Raw. I honestly, when I was watching it, I could not believe it. Raw was great. No, let me rephrase that. It was good. I keep saying great because we haven't seen this type of Raw in a long time. The first hour was solid. Solid. Half half of the show was gr- was, was great. He had the rest of the show was slowly started dying down and then came back up with the return of the dead man. The Undertaker returned to Monday Night Raw and holy shit, was it, it was a holy shit moment. Facing off against Roman Reigns, I understand that a lot of you are not fans of this match, but you got to check out my booking, how I would have booked this match, how I would have booked the feud, and also tune into this specific part of the video where I talk about Roman Reigns and why he should beat The Undertaker. What, what is it going to do? The stare down was epic. I can tell you right now, I am not a mark because I want to see this match. I think this will benefit Roman Reigns so much and it will turn him into the guy he needs to be and it will give The Undertaker a match at WrestleMania. This is, this could possibly be, if WWE respects it well, a WrestleMania main event match. It could be one of the biggest, one of the big matches on WrestleMania. It really could. It could be one of those matches that really proves you wrong. The seven reasons why Roman Reigns should beat The Undertaker. The build has started, ladies and gentlemen. The build has started. Roman Reigns confronting The Undertaker on Raw. Number seven. The start of an epic heel run. Plugging, pulling the trigger on Roman Reigns' long-awaited heel turn is best for all involved. He's already the most hated wrestler in the company, and at the time when WWE are desperate for heels who draw genuine crowd heat, he's exactly what they need in a villain. Really. His first line was, It's my yard now. I'm the big dog, not you anymore. Right? There you go. Defeating the dead man in WrestleMania will send... This heat through the roof, which is what I predicted happening and should happen. Uh, and transform the Samoan into the most universally despised heel they've ever had in years. I always want to say in history, because I haven't been watching WWE for freaking 20, 30 years. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've watched WWE networks. I've listened to podcasts. I've known the business all, all around I've watched it for six or seven years on television, but I've rewatched everything else, and I understand everything that is happening. WWE have already hinted at the turn, Reigns cast Taker, a uh, look of pure scorn after eliminating him from the Royal Rumble, and he can has a con- incredibly cocky in the uh, dead man's presence on Raw. Now, trying to play babyface against a man as beloved as the Undertaker just doesn't work. I mean, Shawn Michaels was booed somewhat as well, so it's obvious whether WWE wants it or not Roman Reigns is going to get booed all they have to do now is have him attack the fans and attack the Undertaker and not give a shit he he acts like that every every time to be honest but uh they haven't put him with the right guys to make us believe that the guy you know is a heel or that he's going to be working as a heel now they put him against the Undertaker he's going to get booed easily easily you know, even even if even the fans that like him are probably going to boo him. I, I I don't know who the hell prefers it under uh, Roman Reigns over the Undertaker, but whoever does, uh, sigh man, just a sigh. The Undertaker, again, as a face, and while these signs are relatively small, uh, they just show the WWE at least recognize this. Reigns is a natural bad guy, and this is a perfect way to transition him to the role he was born to play. And there are plenty of ways to pull it off, whether he turned heel in the build to WrestleMania 33 or at the you know, event itself, defeating Taker as the bad guy. Uh, could and should be the making of Reigns' WWE career, particularly if he's the one who ends his career. I would say have him turn heel at WrestleMania. Obviously, it would be amazing for him to create that build, which is what WWE wants. 
But they already have a lot of other things going for them at WrestleMania. They can build it up from that stuff. Have this be intriguing. Have Roman Reigns show the heel signs, but then turn 100% heel at WrestleMania. Somehow they do that. WrestleMania heel turn is happening. Probably not before then, but this will result in the biggest heel turn ever. If he loses, Fastlane was all for nothing. Because again, why did he bury uh, Braun Strowman? It was almost certain that if Roman Reigns beat Braun Strowman, he should he should have an epic match with The Undertaker and be catapulted into main event status again, which is what it's saying here. Defeating Strowman was undeniably a huge victory for Reigns because look at Strowman. He's been built up as WWE's dominant force, a monster among men. I don't even know if they can say that anymore to him, the monster among men. He's been dethroned by the guy. Reigns needed a huge victory to set him up for The Undertaker, and he enters the feud with incredible momentum. That being said, if Roman Reigns loses to The Undertaker, all this will be for nothing. You know, Braun will have needlessly lost his streak to, on an unimportant C-grade pay-per-view for absolutely no reason. There you go. Which renders his whole push pointless in the first place. <laughs> there you go. You know, the, you, you, you think about it. This affects more than one superstar, ladies and gentlemen. Not just Roman Reigns or The Undertaker. It affects everybody but, you know, behind them as well. Even, even possibly in front. His loss will become a needless sacrifice and a forgotten footnote in Reigns' main event career. There you go. Taker is a shadow of his old self. If Roman Reigns were to beat him, this is a story they could tell. That that is it for The Undertaker. That's a story they could tell. Now, his health hasn't been amazing. You know, he'll be 52 years old by the time WWE hits Orlando. Uh, he was photographed on crutches after undergoing major hip surgery last October, and his Royal Rumble performance made it clear that he was nowhere near 100%. Overweight and out of shape, Taker looked like he was having difficulty performing even the most straightforward movements, and the company were wise to restrict his in-ring time to just a couple of minutes. Now, he's he'll obviously uh, have had a longer time to recover by April 2nd. The Undertaker can't defy father time forever, uh, he isn't the performer he used to be. And with the reins, you know, his continual push uh, as a dominant super athlete, losing to the immobile man, 21 years, his senior makes no sense whatsoever. Now, The Undertaker is the most important wrestler in WrestleMania history, but it's hard to get behind the idea that he can be dominant, a dominant force anymore. It really is, sort of. Um but every time I see him, that I, I, you know, I disagree with that. When I when I see Undertaker, I'm like, yeah, then nobody could touch him. Okay, the guy has come a long way, and that is why he literally is the epitome, or is the is the uh, Mount Rushmore for WWE. Nobody can climb atop that mountain more far than the Undertaker has already climbed it. Went back down, climbed up again, you know, kept doing it many many times, many many years, and he's still doing it. Now, it took him over 30 minutes to push Shane McMahon away last year, so why should he overcome a wrestler who has been pushed as prominently as Roman Reigns? You know, I guess that does make sense because Shane McMahon isn't exactly a wrestler. Roman Reigns is, and Roman Reigns has been pushed so badly, so much, you know, um, that it all in the end, on paper, it does make sense, Right? And that is what could possibly happen. What else could Roman Reigns beating The Undertaker do? Well, a win for The Undertaker really does nothing for him. Now, winning a match should always elevate the victor, but there's nowhere for The Taker to be elevated anymore. He's already as high as possible. He's already transcended stardom to put himself on a level that goes far beyond mere championships and accolades. Uh, the argument looks even stronger if this is indeed The Undertaker's final match. Old school wrestling tradition states that a de departing superstar or wrestler will use their legacy to put somebody else over in their final match. And Taker is the most old school man in the business. If this is the last of The Undertaker, a gifting his final opponent with a huge WrestleMania moment is the right thing to do. Although, here's the issue with that. you can't. How much more are you going to gift Roman Reigns? And that's the unfortunate thing, man. We don't want Roman Reigns with The Undertaker because the guy's been gifted too much. If Roman Reigns was a guy like uh, Kevin Owens, you know, not even, you know, let's say AJ Styles, you know, somebody like that, that who has been booked decent, not over the roof, right? Somebody that we don't like. 
We'd appreciate the Undertaker putting him over, really. But this is despising. This is disgusting. This is what people are saying. To see the sight of Roman Reigns beating the Undertaker. WrestleMania needs some shock value. Because again, WrestleMania moments, not really there a lot. This could be one of the biggest. I can tell you right now. It's the swerve that WWE always wants. And this is a swerve that could be as big as Goldberg and Lesnar. Really. Uh, Goldberg versus Lesnar is particularly prob prob problematic. And not only because the match is unlikely to go for longer than a couple of minutes. Uh, Goldberg is currently 2-0. Against Lesnar and eliminated him from the Royal Rumble with embarrassing ease. As such, WrestleMania 33 is in dire need of some taking points and surprises. And this certainly could do that. You also have Roman Reigns who would join an elite company. He would join an elite company. What does this mean? Well, it's impossible to argue that Roman Reigns isn't one of the most consistently pushed wrestlers in WWE. Even a wellness policy violation couldn't derail his momentum. Not really. And Reigns was still regularly closing shows and dominating opponents during his uh, sojourn in the United States title division. He's as overprotected as they come. And that isn't going to change anytime soon. Now, that being said, Reigns will most likely, uh, you know, what will, is like most of his peers, is still lacking the high-level star power. The likes of Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens have huge followings. And they're great wrestlers in their own right, but neither can compete with the like of Brock Lesnar or Bill Goldberg in terms of buzz. Uh, WWE star making machine just isn't as effective as it used to be, and the likes of Reigns are byproducts of that. Defeating The Undertaker will put Roman Reigns on an elite level. However, only Lesnar can say that he defeated the Deadman at WrestleMania, and equaling that feat would put Reigns several steps closer to Brock's level. Really? That could lead to Lesnar and Brock Lesnar. Imagine if Brock Lesnar puts over Reigns as well. What the hell? Now, suddenly, he'd have to, you know, uh, he'd have the credibility to justify his massive ongoing push. And, you know, with the bulk of WWE's elder, you know, uh, statesmen set to step away from the ring sooner than later, Reigns would finally feel like a suitable replacement. And the number one reason why Roman Reigns should beat The Undertaker... Reversing a worrying trend. WWE have been using aging part-timers to you know, stifle the progress of younger, hungrier wrestlers for decades. It's a direct result of the company's inability to build new superstars. Of course, now WWE's younger main eventers just don't pop ratings like the heroes of the past. But how can they be expected to ever reach the same level as Bill Goldberg's of the world when they're continually treated canyon fodder for wrestlers? Now, regardless of whether it's Brock Lesnar or Goldberg, the WWE Universal Champion is Championship is going to leave WrestleMania 33 around a part-timer's waist. The veterans are going to be all over the show. And if Reigns falls to The Undertaker, it will be further confirmation that WWE is no country for young men. The feeding taker won't reverse the trend, but it will send positive message. Uh, WWE you know, have got to start treating their current stars with respect if they're going to, you know, amass the elderly peers. And what better way to do that is with Reigns defeating The Undertaker in his own yard. I agree with this to an extent because I understand the point of having Roman Reigns be the next guy, which he already really is anyways. Um, but the circumstance is again not right because you have, it's Roman Reigns who's going to be put over. It's Roman Reigns. If this was Owens or Styles or anybody else, you know, um, you, you and you know, Styles and Owens could get booed at house shows, yet they get cheered on live events. Roman Reigns could get booed at live events. Well, we we'll get booed on um, live shows and get cheered on live events. What is more important to WWE? It's the amount of sales and money you make. Roman Reigns must be making a lot of money. A lot of kids connect to him. And unfortunately, the fan base is more of kids and not other people. Because of guys like Roman Reigns. There you go. Why do you, th why, why do you think WWE has not continually pushed the character of Bailey? Because people are going to be like, what the hell am I watching? This is, well, is this Treehouse.com? Is this uh, Disney TV? What the hell is this? It's, it's, I'm trying to watch wrestling. I don't want to see people hugging each other. 
If anything, I want to see people kicking the shit out of each other. And if you can't see that here, well, then you've lost a lot of viewers. A lot of viewers. They'd rather go watch the Disney Channel then. You know? And trust me, WWE cannot put on good Disney channels or Treehouse channels. They can put on good wrestling, but they refuse to do so. And that's the issue here. Is that Roman Reigns, again, is in the wrong circumstance. It shouldn't be him. But since he's the one who is now carrying the WWE on his back, for the people who agree to these terms, having Roman Reigns beat The Undertaker because of what it could do to the future, people could agree. What people can't agree with is, again, you're beating The Undertaker and you're Roman Reigns. There's your problems. But I want to see Roman Reigns beat The Undertaker for two reasons. Number one, man, I want to see the piss on people. How bad people are going to get, you know, just pissed off at that shit. But also, what could this do to the long term of the company? Where could WWE go from here? And could WrestleMania really become a really good, you know, not, not a good, but a shocking show, which will leave people in awe. If the match can be great and Roman Reigns wins, there, there is, you know, I don't want to say there's hope, but there's invisible hope. There is, there is hope that you can't see yet, is what I'm trying to say. So Roman Reigns beating The Undertaker, it could reverse the trend of people possibly saying, oh, part-timers, part-timers. Now you got a full-time guy, maybe. Now, speaking of Undertaker and Roman Reigns, a Hall of Famer pitches a crazy idea for Taker and Reigns at WrestleMania 33. Who is this guy? He is synonymous with professional wrestling. He is synonymous with WWE. The greatest commentator of all time, ladies and gentlemen, good old JR Jim Ross. So, according to WWE Hall of Famer legendary announcer Jim Ross, the big dog should be allowed to breathe the rarest air there is in the wrestling business. He said, quote unquote, I'd likely put Reigns over in Orlando via cheating to gain an unfair advantage as it would, you know, facilitate Reigns leaving WrestleMania with immense heat and bragging rights to carry Roman farther down the road. Ross wrote on his blog, the, that obviously sets up the eventual face turn which will make Roman Reigns a huge uh, fan favorite, ace of the company talent, and that would have uh, has been WWE's focus for a long time. Without a heel turn, this simply won't work. And similarly, if Vince thinks that Reigns being Taker would make him the most, you know, post boy star and face of the company that he wants, likely via a lame handshake at the end, the fans will tell him different. This. JR, you know, however, if, you know, like good old JR indicates, this was to set up a heel run for Reigns, then there will be no better way to do it. He could walk out with immense heat. You know, let me, let me, let me read this over because I'm sort of confused on this. He said, I'd likely put Reigns over, right, uh, via cheating to gain an unfair advantage as it would likely facilitate Reigns leaving WrestleMania with immense heat and bragging rights to carry Roman farther down the road that obviously set up, uh, the eventual face turn, which will make Reigns the huge fan favorite, ace of the company talent that will, that has been WWE's focus on a long time. They'd put him, they'd turn him face again, but what the hell? I don't get that. I really don't. I, I would have expected him to say heel, but apparently at the end they say if JR wants, if JR's uh, indication is a heel run later on in the future, could this be a you know the best way to do? Um, I already predicted this, again, for Roman Reigns to actually turn heel at WrestleMania during the match is a better way. And the cheating idea is great. Um, they could have him walk out as a heel is what I'm predicting and, you know, see where that goes. Um, again, I'm confused on what JR said here, but again, instead of doing that, you know, lame handshake at the end, you know, having him, whatever, you know, uh, or even if he does retire or not, it's not really a, a favorable thing. A guy again, again, cause I said Roman Reigns and Taker, unlikely and unpopular circumstances you're doing that under so really that's not happening but apparently jim ross is saying a face turn i don't i really don't know what that means no disrespect at all i don't understand what that means but again i would do what jr also said is to have the cheat way or have roman reigns cheat his way out of the wrestlemania match and actually have him win though now speaking of this match again there's a lot of news on undertaker and um roman reigns 
Why Braun Strowman backed away from The Undertaker on Raw? What was the reason? We had uh, Braun Strowman who wanted Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns beat him at Fastlane, pinned him at Fastlane. And Roman Reigns was walking out to this, you know, uh, arena. His music hit, and then it was literally two seconds. And The Undertaker's music hit right after. The gong hit, went dark. Undertaker, Strowman staring down. Holy shit, that was actually pretty sick. I would have never thought to see a, that kind of sight. It was an immense, great stare down. Two big men. And people were appreciative of this match. Because why? Strowman is looking fantastic. Amazing, phenomenal, perfect. And to see him against The Undertaker, this could have been a you know really good match. And again, people have been saying this, man. We don't want to see Strowman and Taker. When they see WWE put Strowman on the top of their priority list, you know, obviously, you know, below Roman Reigns, but, you know, one of the top priorities on their list. And look where he's come at this far. And now people want, people have been saying they want to see this match. But unfortunately, he had to walk out and Roman Reigns came out. So really, you got you to gotta, you gotta think about what you say, man. You can't just say that you don't like this match because of what they look like now. WWE, unfortunately, is not at the... Highest of their uh, company, meaning they're not the highest at the creative right now. They are pretty low, but they ha- they are humans that have regular brains that have been doing this for a little while. So they, they may be burned out, but they understand the idea between logic and no- n- nothing that's logical. They understand that if Strowman were to go against Undertaker, how bad that would be. They understand how much Undertaker's worth. So they're going to make it sort of, you know, an equal amount between the opponent and an undertaker to see, you know, if we pair this guy with the undertaker, could he, you know, sell WrestleMania? Strowman could, you know, if now at this point, he's not 100% done, right? Give Strowman until next year's WrestleMania. If they were to do undertaker Strowman, then that would sell out. That would, you got to give things time and nobody's willing to give time to Roman Reigns, the undertaker, but let's see what they can do with this build. Right. Um, unfortunately, Roman Reigns has not changed the way he's done anything. You know, Strowman has immensely, and that's why people like him. Because, it's, you know, it fits his physique. But how can you even say Reigns beating Strowman was, was a good thing, you know? Roman Reigns, it's, again, this is where they defy logic. Why would a guy like Strowman be losing to Reigns who's half his size, you know? That's the thing here. Um, but, again, why was Braun Strowman even, you know, in the ring? If you want to take her to come out, you know, why did they even have that s- slight stare down? What was the reason? Well, the segment first started in a strange way on Monday night after Braun Strowman called out Roman Reigns after claiming he got lucky when Reigns, you know, uh, bested Strowman uh, when they met 24 hours earlier at the Raw exclusive Fastlane event pay-per-view. Now, that was until he was interrupted by The Undertaker. Based on Strowman's characteristics, you'd assume that he'd take his anger on The Undertaker, especially before WrestleMania, but he respected The Undertaker, gave him a tip to his cap and said, to his hat, and said, all right, all right, walked out and got the, got the hell out of here. Why? It's because he knows Undertaker is going to kill Reigns. That's just my opinion, my theory. But what does um, this report have to say, this article? That didn't happen, though, as he backed away and, you know, excited or exited through the crowd without getting into a verbal or physical confrontation, something we're used to seeing with Strowman's booking, although the WWE reportedly have a very good reason for playing it out in that fashion and the way they did. According to IW Nerd, they had Strowman back away as Vince McMahon wanted to tease a future match between Undertaker and Strowman. Again, per storyline, you know, it just makes sense. Strowman is not at the Undertaker's level. He respects Undertaker still because he knows. And he knows that, oh, Roman Reigns, Undertaker, it's going to happen. Most likely, I'll leave Undertaker to do what he needs to do. I'll leave Undertaker to kill Roman Reigns for me. Now, the respect, before Reigns even came out uh, into the foiled or fold, it was speculated that Strowman would be meeting the dead man in Orlando on April 2nd, but the company decided against it for now anyways. The nod seems to be a key factor in this, as well as they claiming, uh, as they're claiming that it was a sign of respect to the phenom. Uh, not that it, not that he was running away from a fight, but uh, which makes sense as WWE would have easily set up the match with Reigns on Raw without Strowman involved at all. Now Strowman has shown a lot of improvement uh, in his in-ring work. 
So it comes as no surprise that WWE officials are high on him. And even though he may not be the marquee match or the marquee guy for the match, uh, the man at WrestleMania, you can bet that he'll be the name fans are talking about after the event. It might be a risk going up against the Phenom, but right now, he is consistently strong. He is consistently being booked, and he continues to be booked strong on the red brand. Then it may be a few WWE cannot afford to miss out later on. Now, Vince has his way. Expect The Undertaker to meet the Monster Among Men at some point down the line. Maybe next year. I don't know about that. Uh, we could have a battle amongst the two men. Maybe Undertaker doesn't retire this year. Maybe it is Strowman. Or maybe we see John Cena. I don't know. Um, to me, Undertaker and Strowman. Undertaker with with Strowman, is a, is, it could become a WrestleMania match. But really, it could be more of a uh, match we see on a, a lower level pay-per-view. Maybe even a SummerSlam, right? Something like that. But it's 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 a it's a massive match that Vince would sure, surely want at WrestleMania. Because it's just a two big men match. So that's why... Strowman left because it was out of respect. It was out for a tease for, you know, possibly next year, maybe even before then. Now, that is what we're talking about, Undertaker Roman Reigns. The news for that is sort of it for that. But we have more news on another match happening at WrestleMania. There's Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. Now, we all know that people don't want this match happening because two reasons. Number one, why are these guys fighting for the universal title? You're wasting a championship shot for who else could possibly need it. And number two, they're two part-timers who can't steal the show at all. There you go, right? So they're hogging up a championship, and they're going to hog up time, right? Um, if you had these guys go against anybody else, right, it would have been better. But you're having them against go against each other. There's already bad blood between them in terms of wrestling. Not really good wrestling between the both of them. How do you expect this to go down? It's not going to be a 15, 10, 15 minute match. It's going to be roughly five minutes. WrestleMania doesn't necessarily mean 30 minute matches, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, open your eyes, people. It's not a 30 minute match that needs to happen at WrestleMania. WrestleMania moments is what WWE is fond of. Lesnar beating Goldberg, five minutes. Do something that Lesnar uh, didn't do. Outsmart Goldberg. He understands Goldberg now. He's faced him off many times. Survivor Series, WrestleMania 24, whatever the hell that, uh, WrestleMania, I think it was WrestleMania 20, my bad. Uh, even at the Royal Rumble, right? He, he This past Raw, he knows Goldberg's tactics, tactics and what he's going to do. He's seen what happened with Kevin Owens. So that's why Goldberg now is going to, you know, be in for a ride, be in for a big shot at WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar. And unfortunately, the issue again is how can these two guys even close WrestleMania with the skills they have? Barely none. Sami Zayn explains his issue with Goldberg and Lesnar at WrestleMania 33. Goldberg versus Lesnar is just not a problem to us, but also Sami's freaking Zayn. What does Sami Zayn have to say about this? A WWE superstar himself has issues with this match. There you go. Uh, major money-making spots, like the one we saw at Survivor Series, are what drive this business nowadays. In opinions of many fans, this should go down to the hardworking talents that work around 300 days a year. Um, Sami Zayn is one of the one such superstar, a performer who has put on clinics with Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho in the last 12 months, one year. Speaking to the Sun, Sami Zayn explained the problem with having the two part timers in such prominent spots as the granddaddy of them all. Uh, even though he understands from a business perspective why they are there, even I do, even everybody does. He says, quote unquote, the thing I'd like to see is more of a mix of these past generation's talents with the current roster. There you go. That's how you put over current talent. For me, it's really cool to see a guy like Chris Jericho, for example, who's come back for a year or two, mix it up with all of us. Now he's facing Kevin Owens. There you go. There you go. Rain Yorton, Bray Wyatt. There you go. Taker, Roman. There you go. Lesnar and Goldberg. Well, not really. Uh, he said, I want to see a guy from a past generation. How is he going to fare against our generation? That's what's cool and interesting to, for me to see. That's what made you know The Rock versus Hulk Hogan so interesting. There you go. Obviously, they're two of the biggest icons in the history of our industry. But still, it was a generational clash. A clash of the past versus the present and the future. 
I guess it's cool to see these two mammoths and Brock Lesnar and Goldberg go at it, but I'd rather, you know, uh, see Brock Lesnar and Kevin Owens and Goldberg and possibly me or even Seth Rollins or Roman Reigns. As a fan, I want to see the last generation mixed up with this generation. The guy knows what he's doing and knows what he's saying because, you know, doesn't give a shit, man. He knows what the wrestling business is about and he knows nowadays what people want. It's like literally making fantasy matches, making up, you know, matches that we predict that we want to see that, you know, things that we haven't seen, you know, and it's up to WWE to put that on for us, you know, Sami Zayn, you know, saying that he has a problem. And I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of guys in the back are putting immense heat on this, you know, immense heat on Goldberg. I mean, Goldberg's getting trashed. Goldberg got tweeted by some guy to say to kill himself. Because apparently, you know, he's a part-timer and he doesn't like him. And another Mark saying this kind of stuff, right? And people bashed him out as well. And Goldberg was like, thanks for the support, you know? Really appreciate or something. He was really, really um, professional there. But people do not like the fact that Goldberg and Lesnar are going to main event, possibly at WrestleMania. And Sami Zayn, if Sami Zayn was not employed with the WWE, he'd probably say this in much more, oh, much more uh, emphatic statement, okay? Lesnar and Goldberg... He even knows, I'm pretty sure, that this is not going to steal the show by any means. Everybody knows. So obviously he said this so he could tell the WWE Universe and the fans. So the fans will know that, you know what, okay, Sami Zayn does not like this match, period. The end of the sentence. That's what he wanted to give out, okay? He didn't want to go into that much clipped content and stuff because if he did, he probably wouldn't be in the job he is right now, you know? WWE can easily fire this guy, right? What are they doing with him? They, they don't care. He's not CM Punk, right? You know, because he's not being pushed like that. So they don't really care. So he has to keep his mouth shut. So anyways, Sami Zayn has an issue with Goldberg and Lesnar. And that's what I also said, man. Goldberg and Brock Lesnar are the two guys that are not going to be the people that steal the show. They're going to be the ones that are going to create the moment on the show. The biggest possible moment on the show between these two guys is what's going to happen. More moments to be created later on this year. We got Broken Matt Hardy, who gives a bizarre interview while speaking about the WWE rumors. This is what he said. He was speaking in an interview with TMZ. And he said, uh, there's a lot to take in here, but let's try and, you know, dissect what exactly is going on because of Hardy... Uh, because Hardy does provide a few bits on information amid the madness. Firstly, it sounds as if the contract situation with the Ring of Honor is flexible. Having a short-term contract to hold things over while their long-term plans fall into place makes some sense. He says, currently I am able to go anywhere. No, I'm not going to say that. Uh, but I am with the Honorable Ring, Ring of Honor, ROH. And I will be on pay-per-view this Friday night as myself and the nefarious Brother Nero... We are prepared to delete Matt Hardy when asked if he's speaking with WWE about a return. Probably not at this point. There's just under a month until WrestleMania, which would be a golden opportunity for the WWE and Hardy boys to reunite on camera once again with a huge stage. And Matt Hardy didn't rule out the possibility of the scenario playing out. When you are dealing with broken Matt Hardy and the brother Nero and the broken Hardys, anything is possible anything he said when asked by tmz sports if a wrestlemania surprise was in store matt hardy and jeff hardy reportedly parted ways with tna after contract negotiations took a turn for the worst you know that's probably the biggest thing happening to tna you you, you would normally classify the uh the hardy boys with tna at this point the broken hardy boys with tna now since they're gone from tna now the ring of honor honorable ring is what they call it and um it's going to be very weird, but it's going to be very interesting to see them rebranch and resurface and, you know, face other competition and talent. Uh, the broken Matt Hardy and broken Jeff Hardy, brother Nero, uh, reportedly, again, parted ways. And now they are seeming to be with a new deal somewhere else. It seems clear that Matt Hardy has held several conversations with interested promotions. I have had conversations with every promoter that runs every major wrestling organization across the world, Matt Hardy said. I've spoke with people from McMahon's show. I've spoke with people from New Japan Wrestling. I've spoke with people in Mexico. 
And I have spoke with people across the globe. Hardy then closed the quick interview with a warning of for his former boss. This is what he said. McMahon, if you ever try anything shady on my broken brilliance, I would be the first man to delete you. There you go. Despite it being one of the wackiest interviews from Hardy yet, there were some details he shared with TMZ Sports, even if he went full broken the entire time. So what do you think about the possible return to WWE? Again, Matt Hardy, you know, saying I will delete you to Vince McMahon as he discusses possible return if, again, this is obviously referring to the fact that he, you know, his gimmick, do not bury me, okay? I'm broken Matt Hardy. I will delete you if you mess with me. You know, if you are become too shady, you know what he's saying? Uh, he needs to get the full control. These guys need to get the full creative control for WWE. They need to do what they have to do. And I would be all for the fact that if they go there as the regular tag team, people notice them as a regular tag team, and they bust their head open or and they return to the broken brilliance, you know, throughout the WWE program. Not just once, not just... You know, uh, appear WrestleMania as broken, but if they're going to sign a contract with WWE, come there as a uh, possible, you know, return, which could happen. Go there and act normal as the Hardy Boys from the 2000s, and then you know, go crazy later. You know, screw up your brain somehow and return to the broken brilliance gimmick, so people know that okay, this is how it happens, and they can return back to their normal ways. I would be all for that. Um, I don't know how that's going to play out in. Um, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy's books, if they want that. Um, WWE, I think, should be all for anything the Hardys do because they're going to get money anyways. Really, anyways. As long as they do not touch what they are producing. Right? Um, That's all I can really say about that article and what I think about, you know, uh, WWE and possibly Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy returning to WWE. So he said he will delete Vince McMahon Man, I, I don't know why somebody hasn't deleted him already. Seriously, he's been putting shit that nobody really cares about. And we can finally get these guys. I've been tweeting these guys a long time, you know. Please delete WrestleMania. Please delete the shit we're going to see at WrestleMania. And replace it with your broken brilliance. Please do that. You know, obviously, you don't get any replies from these guys. These guys are, you know, high status in the world. But whatever the case is, man, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see broken Matt Hardy. And broken Brother Nero back in WWE again. A confrontation with the New Day is up in the air right now. And before I end off this video, guys, we are leading up to one hour of great content. I'm going to leave you, before I uh, end this off, I'm going to leave you with two things. One is the updated list of the confirmed entrance in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal WrestleMania. So here are some confirmed entrants, actually. Part of the um, match this year. So we got wrestlers so far to declare their entry into the under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. They are mostly from SmackDown Live brand. We got Mojo Rawley and Apollo Crews, both of which who have vowed to make a name for themselves using the Battle Royal to catapult their stardom. Uh, Dolph Ziggler interrupted Rawley while he was explaining so as much. So it'll likely be he'll also likely be in Dolph Ziggler. Uh, which is unfortunate. I wanted him to be in a main event match. Uh, other rumors also include possibly Braun Strowman, which is an unfortunate, unfortunate. If it's Braun Strowman, he's winning the match. There you go. Okay. If Hulk Hogan returns, he's not. <laughs> I mean, if he's part, people were saying he's part of the uh, Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. It makes sense, you know, Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. But uh, no, he's not winning over Strowman. Strowman's beating and winning that match. If Hulk Hogan wins, what the f- what the fuck is that? Again, seriously, um, out of the blue, I think Strowman deserves the win because he's again the new talent. If you have Hulk Hogan winning, really does really nothing. Really, um, we got a lot of a lot of returns happening at the Battle Royal. Uh, apparently, they're saying Alexa Bliss is defending her title in, you know, against everybody. What does that mean? Is that does that mean a gauntlet match? Does that mean I think I think I, I don't know if Daniel Bryan said all at once or all just all the women? That could either mean uh, a gauntlet match. Probably not because if Alexa Bliss so happens to beat somebody, let's just say on the, her first try, all the other women do not get a opportunity. Or let's say no, let's say if the women that is first beats Alexa Bliss, 
then the rest of the women don't get the opportunity, right? I don't think they'd have them all face a different champion on the same night. Let's say if Alexa Bliss is facing uh, Becky Lynch and Becky Lynch wins, and the next person now is Natalia. Well, now, since Alexa Bliss is not champion anymore, will Natalia face Becky Lynch? That's going to be a screwed up thing. Gauntlet match? No, no, good idea. Probably a battle royal. That's probably how it's going to go, and they're probably going to book it a good, at least, you know, uh, 15, 10 to 15 minutes. And unfortunately, if you're a woman on the roster and you're a part of SmackDown Live, that's the most you can expect, man. Especially at WrestleMania. That's the most you can expe expect. Um, now, here's the current WrestleMania 33 card that is rumored. Again, the updated card. Again, we got Lesnar and Goldberg, Universal Champion. We got Bray Wyatt Orton, uh, WWE Championship. Confirmed this past Monday Night Raw. Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens, WWE uh, United States Championship. Again, could Sami Zayn possibly beat Chris Jericho on Raw for this match? Could he get screwed by Kevin Owens? Could something like that happen? Maybe. Maybe it could. Sorry, my voice cracked there. <clears throat> I've been talking for an hour, man. Bro, oh, so is it a possibility that Kevin Owens could lose or it cause Chris Jericho to lose a championship? And really, there is no title then. I don't think that's going to happen because why would Kevin Owens want the title to be, lo to be lost? Uh, you know... Kevin Owens obviously wants the title, so and he's the one who challenged him for the title. So it looks like no screwing of that's going to happen. My prediction is off. Uh, we got Bailey Sasha Banks versus Charlotte. Bailey versus Charlotte versus Sasha Banks Raw Women's Championship. I guess Nia Jax is out of this, right? I was expecting Nia Jax to appear this week on Raw, but apparently she didn't. I don't know if they're going to exclude her out of it. I don't know if next week we'll see something like that because Nia Jax just can't be. I mean, she lost to Charlotte. I mean, Sasha Banks at Fastlane. Maybe they're just going to be like, okay, all right now. So you get out of here, all right? We'll have some programming back for you after WrestleMania. See, what what one pay-per-view does to you? WWE Fastlane, man. It's such a horrible pay-per-view. Now you have a triple threat for the Raw Women's Championship. There was supposed to be a triple threat for the SmackDown Women's Championship, but it looks like a lot of the earlier predictions is uh, were correct. To have a triple threat, uh, or not a triple threat, a battle royal for the championship versus the world, you know, Alexa Bliss versus the world. What the hell does that mean? Right? Most likely a battle royal. Uh, I don't know what else could possibly happen here. That's your SmackDown Women's Championship. Then you got Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, the Good Brothers versus Enzo Moore, Big Cass, and Or Cesaro and Sheamus, probably in a triple threat tag match. And then you got the Honor of the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So these are sort of um, not all confirmed, but more so rumored match. It's happening at WrestleMania. So you got guys like Ziggler, Corbin, not no, not Corbin, uh, Ziggler, Raleigh, Cruz, all these guys that WWE doesn't give a shit about. They're going to be in the Honor of Giant Memorial Battle Royal. My opinions, I think you should relegate this match to the pre show, please. It's going to take too much time on WrestleMania. There's like 10 matches happening. How are you going to fill all of this up at WrestleMania, giving us good 20, 30-minute matches? Obviously, at least two of the main matches out of the whole card is going to be bullshitted. One of them is probably going to be Lesnar and Goldberg. The other one could be something else, right? Um, they're going to cut down time on the women for sure uh, at this pace. So that's your WrestleMania 33 updated card. Hopefully, WrestleMania is going to be looking a little bit more appealing than last year. Before I end this off... Once and for all, I got a new story for you guys. Why the WWE almost fired John Cena? I'm going to end this off with a with a nice, relaxing story. Listen up and just relax as I talk to you about Cena almost being fired by WWE. Who was the one that saved him? Stephanie McMahon. Over the past 14 years, John Cena has inarguably become one of the greatest WWE superstars of all time. The 16-time world champion has carried the WWE on his back for the better part of the past decade. Headlining WrestleMania after WrestleMania, blowing merchandise sales through the roof and rarely missing any time due to injury. Amazingly enough, it almost never happened. During the most recent edition of Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Metzler, the wrestling news god. He revealed that WWE nearly fired the biggest star before he even became the Cena, the Cena, uh, the C Nation leader we've all come to know and respect. Most of us, at least. Messler says that John Cena's early call-up in 2002 nearly cost him his career. Apparently, the WWE was very close to letting him go, but one very influential WWE superstar changed their mind. John Cena worked for OVW 
for a while, which is where he really learned his craft. He was called up too soon, which everyone knew. And there's political reasons why that happened. And it nearly cost him his career. If it wasn't for Stephanie McMahon taking a liking to him after they just, you know, about decided to let him go, he could have been gone. Or would have been gone. Now, Cena debuted a fairly generic character in 2002 under his prototype gimmick, which basically meant he looked like a prototype, prototypical wrestler. Unfortunately, that was all about um, Cena had going for him at the time. But Stephanie McMahon saw enough potential in the young superstar to keep him around, and Cena was reborn as the rapper from West Newbury, Massachusetts. Messler also speculated on how WWE... Uh, or how different the WWE would have taken to Stephanie not have had Stephanie not made the save. Now imagine that. Imagine the business or this business in the last 11 years with John Cena and without him as the top guy, and then John Cena being out of the picture. Now obviously they would have gone with Batista as the top guy, and Batista would have been as as good in the situation as John Cena, and he wasn't as versatile as Cena though. Now he would have been okay and it's not like the business would have collapsed but it would have been a lot worse off now it's very very likely that the pga may have never happened with dave batista leading the way uh batista never was the clean cut babyface superhero that parents would want their kids to um uh, you know replicate humiliate uh emulate emulate my bad he had a belly button tattoo for crying out loud <laughs> oh man i remember that even if the WWE did want to use him in that role, Batista has always been very critical of the WWE's more kid-friendly direction. Because again, that's not what wrestling should be about. Now as for Cena, he can only assume he would have never given up on his dream to become the best professional wrestler in the business. Character, popularity-wise, for sure. Jeff Jarrett had just started up TNA in 2002, and... It would be more than two years before they landed on a spot on television. Can you imagine where John Cena would start his career if it would have been in TNA? Would he have blossomed or blossomed into a much bigger star for TNA and the actual competition for Vince? You know, could we have seen another Monday Night Wars? We don't even know. I think we can all argue or agree that both John Cena and the WWE are in better uh, places thanks to Stephanie McMahon's powers of persuasion. Cena's team, or Cena will team up with his real-life girlfriend, Nikki Bella, to face off in a mixed tag team match against The Miz and Maurice at WrestleMania 33 before taking some time off to work on various film projects. The 16-time champion can also be ho uh, hosting, uh, or will also be seen hosting the Saturday's Nickelodeon Awards, Kids' Choice Awards, something I feel pretty safe. <laughs> something I feel pretty safe in saying Batista would never be able to pull off, ever. There's your short story, ladies and gentlemen. Cena almost fired. Why? Generic character. The guy that really nobody saw anything in except for Stephen McMahon. And now, if he was in TNA, man, just the idea, the thought of Cena not even being in the top of the WWE, being in TNA. Could there have been another Monday Night Roars? Roars. Wars is what I'm trying to say. The Monday Night Wars was a great time, and we're trying to make this time just as great. I don't know if that's possible, ladies and gentlemen. But that is your huge-ass freaking WWE Rumors Reports News Controversy video. Over an hour officially. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for sticking around and staying here for this freaking long. Probably one of the longest videos. Longest video I've ever made on my channel. You can expect way more out of me for the rest of of this year ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for tuning in this video apologize for the long delay uh two days without any videos hopefully this has paid up for it ladies and gentlemen peace out stop listening to this video listen in tomorrow when i upload another WWE rumors reports news and controversy see you later guys peace out